Hi there, Tracy here with another card making process video. I'm trying to become more efficient at making cards, so I'm really emphasizing card making in my crafty endeavors these days. I have subscribed to the Hero Arts My Monthly Hero card kit club and I've just subscribed on a month to month basis because I don't plan to um, have too many of these kits come in. I feel like I have a ton of supplies and I really don't need more supplies but I thought that these getting these kits every month might for at least maybe two or three months might give me a chance to get excited and a little bit outside of my comfort zone and um, be kind of trying some different things with cards. I do have a pretty extensive lawn fawn card collection or not card but uh, stamp and die collection and I really do love using those but I thought that getting the this kit for a couple of months might give me a few card making supplies that are a little bit out of my general um, style I guess of card making that might stretch my my creative uh, muscles a little bit so here is the stamp set that comes in this kit. This kit seems to feature primarily a fairly large star stamp set as you can see this is bigger than four by six it is in fact eight and a half by six and a half and so you can see lots of stamps and fairly large sized stamps so great for coloring great for um, probably paper piecing or any other kinds of techniques that you might want to do it also comes with a coordinating die set and this month I don't know if they always do this but this month there's also another die besides the dies that coordinate with the stamps there is this large fancy coffee shop silver silhouette type of a die and as you can see I'm just kind of checking it out this is literally the first time I've looked at this I really like the theming on the card behind the uh, stamps and the dies it's you've got this really cute coffee mug on this side and then on this side it's patterned to look like the froth of a coffee cup I really of a cup of coffee I really like that and it of course has the hero arts logo up in the top corner and it tells you some information about hashtag tags to use when you share it online and that sort of thing. So I thought that I would start this video by just giving you a little bit of a close-up of what comes in the kit. There's also some paper that is kind of really uh, cute paper that look it almost looks like a coffee filter see that paper right there I love it and also a glaze pen like a lacquer pen and a really cool foaming or what do they call it I think they call it a puffy embossing powder and I'm going to use all of those things in this card as you can see I've already made one card and my second card here is going to be basically based off of that one it's it's I'm card lifting myself here and so uh, I just wanted to kind of do a little bit of a different take on it and I'll show you the other card up close at, towards the end. So I'm starting with a card front here. This is cut to an A2 sized card and it's in craft paper. The craft that I like to use is by Stampin' Up. They call it Crumb Cake. And I'm going to do some tone on tone stamping to make a patterned background. And so I have my Crumb Cake ink that I'm using with my Crumb Cake paper and I I really love this top down look at a coffee cup. I really love it. There, I had cleaned my stamp with a baby wipe last time and so the stamp was not very clean. It had some fibers left over from that baby wipe and some stamps are stickier than others and I'll just make a mental note to not use baby wipes with these Hero Art stamps because they are pretty sticky and the fibers of my baby wipe stuck to it. So I'm just turning this uh, stamp as I fill in the whole the whole card with it and it doesn't have to be perfect some of this is going to be covered by the other paper that I'm going to layer over top and I'm just using my stamp scrubber to clean my stamp instead of a baby wipe this time and I'm doing this work on a non-stick mat it is by Heidi Swap it's just a white one it's just like the brown one that everybody else uses it's just mine is white I pulled out a lawn fawn die here this is actually an embossing die it's going to put a stitched edge along the top and bottom of this fancy piece of mixed media type paper it's very similar to a coffee filter in fact I wouldn't be surprised if it is coffee filter paper 
And I really love the soft, delicate look that that gives. And those are the stitched borders dies that I was using there. I just picked out the stitched one. And basically, I want this piece of coffee filter like paper to look like a coffee sleeve around my cup. And so I cut it a little bit longer than it needed to be. And then I just folded it around the edges. And then adding that stitched edge really makes it look more like a coffee sleeve than it would if I just used the paper. And on the other card, I used vellum in that place. And so I just grabbed these are Spellbinders Nestabilities. These are very, very old. I've had these for so long and they've come in so handy. These oval shapes, I have the ovals and the scalloped ovals. And I'm taking the second largest of each of those and making this layered um, thing that I can put on my card. <laughs> I don't know what to call it, like a frame or a place for my coffee cup to live. And uh, it, as you can see, I used a lush bag because it was just the perfect color for the Copic markers that I had used to, co to color my other coffee cup. And so I thought that I would uh, use the same color scheme on this card as well. I only have so many Copic colors. And so when I find a color scheme that I like, I usually kind of make a note of it and try to stick to it because it uh, it's easier than trying to find colors from scratch every single time. I'm using my Misty tool here to stamp and I did need to double stamp and just to get a good crisp image. And using a stamping platform like that really does help with stamping. It makes it so much more enjoyable because your rate of success is greatly increased when you use a stamping platform. So the colors that I'm using here are R21, 22, and 24, and E23, 25, and 27. I'm just going to lay down a coat of the lightest color, which is R21. And it doesn't have to be perfect. As you can see, it's pretty blobby, but by the time I fill everything in, and I find it it's easier to use this flicking technique from one in one direction, like my hand will do it one way, but it won't do it the other way. So I just switch it around, like I just move my piece around so that I can always flick the color in the same direction because my motor skills just don't allow me to do it the other way. I don't know what it is about that. Do you guys find that? Anyhow, if I'm not flicking from left to right, it doesn't flick. It just basically draws. <laughs> I'm adding the darkest color now and going back with the medium color to blend it in a little bit more. And I don't need this to be perfect. I'm just leaving a little bit of the lightest spot in the center that will make this cup look nice and 3D and like the center part is sticking out more. Basically anything that you make dark will recede and anything that you make light will, will come forward. And so when you're wanting to add dimension, just keep in mind that anything that is closer to your eye should be, should be, light in color and anything that's further away should be darker in color and also anything that's in the shadows or underneath of something else should be should be dark and when I use the word should I'm using it very gently because you can color whatever way you want it doesn't have to be a certain way as you can see I'm not really following any rules I don't usually spend any time or energy in thinking about where the source of light is and that sort of thing because these are just cards I'm not making artwork for anything very special and so I'm just kind of doing my best as you can see my saucer is a, a little strange looking because it's got that I don't know I think I probably could have just made all of the saucer dark it didn't have to have that little streak of light on it, it doesn't really matter there you go it looks fine doesn't it so there's my cup and my saucer all colored in and now I'm going to add some coffee to it and I wasn't sure how much of this you're going to see once I add my whipped cream on top of it but I decided to color it all in anyways using basically the exact same strategy of filling it all in and then adding darker to the two edges and I am going to color in this coffee cream like it's kind of like a, a a vanilla e whipped topping. I didn't want it to be white white, but I'm going to use a technique on top of it and I'm not sure how much of my technique is going to cover this. 
I didn't know. So I was, I'm just kind of winging it. So I colored it in just in case, but I was pretty sure I was going to cover it all. Now I am using the crystal clear lacquer pen that came in the kit. This pen is not branded at all. So I just wrote on it. And it's basically, it, it seems to me to be very, very similar to glossy accents. I'm actually very, very pleased to have this pen uh, because I'm not my glossy accents bottles are all clogged. I have two or three of them and I can't get any of them to work. And so I'm going to use this lacquer pen instead of glossy accents. But what I saw online, I did a quick search to see what are people doing with this pen. And what I found that people are doing is they're using the pen as the glue for the embossing powder and then heating it. And you get this really bubbly look when you do this. This embossing powder is white puff embossing powder and so it does puff up a little bit more than regular embossing powder does but not this much so what you're seeing here is the combination of the crystal clear lacquer pen and the puff embossing powder because on my first card I used just the embossing powder with Versamark uh, ink and it didn't puff up nearly this much. And I'll show you at the end, you'll get to see the comparison of the embossing powder with Versamark and the embossing powder with this crystal clear lacquer. And I really love how fluffy it looks. It, it looks just like some whipped topping. It adds this really nice texture and dimension to this card. Oops, wrong die. Got a, it helps if you pick the right die. And I'm going to just uh, cut this out. So I am going to use a piece of washi tape to just stick my die down. It's a little bit uh, difficult because the the uh, handle part of the die is not see-through. So I just had to make sure if the rest of it is all lined up, then you know that the handle will be lined up as well. So I am trying to keep everything in place so I don't lose any of those dies. I have lost dies before and I think they got thrown out. So I'm a little bit paranoid about, about keeping things together. I'm just trimming off that little white edge and I didn't run that through my die cut machine because the die cut machine would have squished that puffy embossing stuff. I could have die cut it first and then done the puff embossing, but I wouldn't have had much to hang on to. And I'm not great at using tweezers for those sorts of things. So I just decided to to emboss it on the paper and then hand cut it. I did leave the border around the top part of the whipped cream because that coordinates with the border that's all the way around the cup. And I, you know, I, I think it just looks like it's all one piece then. I like how that looks. So now I have to decide on my sentiment. Now in my other card, I put the sentiment under the coffee cup, but it was a different shaped coffee cup, so that worked well. But here, I want the sentiment to almost look like it's the steam coming off of the coffee, even though it isn't. I just wanted to look to give that kind of feeling. The same thing with the coffee sleeve. It's not exactly a coffee sleeve, but I just want to give that 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 look. So I'm using my Misty tool again, and I think I'm gonna end up stamping this three times. There we go. Nice and dark. It gives a nice pop of sentiment there on that, on that oval background. And now I'll position my cup, and I'm using Stampin' Up Dimensional Adhesive to stick this in place. Ah, oh, I really like that. Now I went for a tone on tone look here with my scallop being a, a, the same color as the uh, teacup, but you could also mix it up and go with a complementary color. So maybe something that would pop out like something in the blues or um, any, any different color would work. Uh, I think maybe like a dark brown might work well as an accent here as well, especially with the coffee theme. I'm taking some Stampin' Up! Linen Thread. I love this stuff. It's so light and and uh, thin. I really like it. And that's on the, the other card, the inspiration card. So I decided to put it on this one too. I thought about fanning it out a little bit, but it looks too distracting. I like it better kind of all going the same direction. I'm going to place my pop dots so that they do not interfere with the strings. 
I'm going to play around a little bit with those strings. And as you can see, the other card has a different coffee cup and a different sentiment on it, but they are definitely sister cards. The other card uses a piece of vellum as the coffee sleeve. And it really doesn't look as much like a coffee sleeve without the stitched border. That was part of my tweaking from one card to the next is to add that stitched border to make it look more like a coffee sleeve. Now I am going to stamp a sentiment inside. I'm going to go with coffee is always a good idea. I'm going to give these cards along with Starbucks uh, gift cards or Tim Hortons gift cards, depending on who I give it to. We Canadians love our Tim Hortons, but some of us really love Starbucks, so you have to know who you're giving your card to. <laughs> um, here's a, just a close-up of that foam. Look at how textured it is. I'm going to turn down my exposure on my camera in a second here so that you can get a better look at that because I think the lights are kind of blowing it out a little bit. There we go. Now you can see it a little bit better. Look at that texture. It's so foamy. It's perfect. This is the perfect item to include in this kit that is so coffee themed. And now I'm going to just show you this one. This is how the embossing looks. See how it is bumpier than regular embossing powder, but it's not nearly as puffy as it is when you use it with, with uh, VersaFine or Versamark, sorry. So here are the two cards. And here's another close up of that foam. Thanks so much for watching. And here are two other cards. There'll be another video on my channel showing those ones being made. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this card making video. I'm on a bit of a journey for learning about cards. So bear with me as I post more cards than usual. I will also be scrapbooking and posting those videos as I go as well. Thanks so much for watching and have a really great scrappy week.